Greetings, greetings, everyone, and welcome to Chronicles of a Nonprofit, episode 52. You are in the house with Dr. Darina Shine. We are here tonight embracing the power of the manifestation of what is taking place in our world as entrepreneurs, and we welcome you to this podcast. Today is September the 21st. You are here with us. We are so grateful that you're in the in the podcast, that you're listening, that it's tap you're tapping into some of the needed information that we give here at Chronicles of a Nonprofit. So what is the purpose of the Chronicles? The Chronicles are to bring about a understanding of the highs and lows in business development that each entrepreneur will pursue in their career whether they see it firsthand or if they witness it observing. You're going to observe some of the chaos, some of the lows, some of the crazy things that people do in the midst of building their brand, building their, their purpose or their mission or their passion. Oh my God, they're going to continue to show you things if you're wise enough to keep an eye open and an ear to the grind. You know, you got to keep that specific. Shout out goes to Nambia. I love that country. Welcome, welcome, Sophia from Nambia. I see that you tuned in and you responded to episode 51 in the comment section. And when we ask the question, are leaders born or created? You feel that they are born. You have to come to this planet with the gift. You have to come with that gift and you have to preserve the gift because many will try to take the gift before one even recognizes they have it, that it is a unique gift from the most high creator. They're going to try to take it. So Sophia, you're absolutely right. Being an entrepreneur, being a leader, being a good parent in your household, being a leader as a as a young adult, we have to understand how it it's an intrinsic value. It's something that we tap into as we observe other things happening in our external environment, and that's what makes us who we become in the area of entrepreneurship. So tonight, I wanted to talk specifically, you know, at first, I wanted to share my day. I wanted to let you all know that we have been gifted and blessed with another location. So we're going to be doing a women's home that is going to be specific for those women in need. And the Youngstown Community Center is in its rightful place where... We have a little bit more work to do, and we will be unveiling the uh, groundbreaking um, grand opening (laughs) for our, our new location. So we are moving forward in helping empower and inspire people to continue to move forward through second chance opportunities. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that. And then I wanted to talk a little bit about ownership entitlement. You know, I'm dealing with a client who is very comfortable in their world and they've been a committed person who has been residing in this location for X amount of years and very comfortable. And so when we as home owners or renters or leasers, whenever we feel super comfortable It's hard for us to do, uh, to change, especially when we've been using certain areas, certain land, but ownership entitlement does one thing in this world and that entitles an owner to have the right, to have the privilege to uh, have access to his property. So we're having a debate, a Hatfields and McCoy debate on whose property this goes to. So here comes surveyors, here comes attorneys, here comes individuals that are going to have to teach adults how to get along as neighbors. And that's what I wanted to talk about. And then I wanted to talk about why entrepreneurs are so different than everyday individuals. So 
my mind was just everywhere and I just wanted to get on to number one, stay committed to the Chronicles. Because what are the Chronicles? The Chronicles are the highs and lows in business. These are Chronicles of, of highs and lows in business that every entrepreneur will experience in their lifetime. Whether they are experiencing them on a independent basis where it is personal or whether they're looking at it from an observational point of view, whether it is something that is just observed by the professional. But somehow or way, we're going to experience these chronicles. And everyone has a unique chronicle that they're going to have to endure. So my goal is to help empower you and inspire you to know that you are not alone. When things, when things fall apart, when we fall down and get back up, some of us bounce right back up. And then I wanted to speak on leadership and, you know, a leader, you can tell they are born, Sophia. They're born because what will happen is they can take a fall and somehow or another maneuver right back into position where they were and they keep going. And it takes a leader. It takes an a. Uh, a spiritual, a spiritually strong and unique individual to go through a fall and get right back up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that fall is not a good thing, but it's needed in order to see what the remnants is going to be in the end. So everybody, whether you're, you know, dealing with land as a homeowner through entitlement, or whether you're just trying to figure out how you're going to work with your grand opening as an entrepreneur, whether you are dealing with the environment and the environment is making you more observational than normal and you're seeing those side stories, those things that would normally not be seen if you were not awake and giving yourself that opportunity to understand and let people know you're not going to be taken advantage of. You're not going to be manipulated. You're not going to be bamboozled because you don't have to be. Why? Because you've been there and done that. You've already fell there. And there's nothing that anyone can tell you about that fall because you remember how hard it hurt. So when you remember how hard a fall hurts, you try not to go back to it. That's just like, why would a person continue to lie about something just to lie? to manipulate and to motivate themselves to believe that black is white and white is black. And this is the reprobation of the mindset that we tend to have without realizing that we are putting our own self into the state of mental illness. If a man is cheating on his wife because, and he's lying to her, telling her that he's at work and he's working on the project or that he's, you know, running the business, and then in actuality, he's not, not only is he deflating his brand, he's also criminalizing himself because he's telling himself that he's doing one thing, but he's doing another. And then in doing that, what is it doing? It is manipulating and making him feel less than. Why not go ahead and really and truly be working? Why not just do that for those of us who do, you know, but to lie about it? Those liars, and when it comes to a business and entrepreneurship, lying is the worst thing that we can do to our brand because somebody somewhere will know the story, will know the truth. If anyone has been following Country Wayne, who is a co comedian from the South, if you follow him, you know exactly what I'm talking about because Wayne is the epiphany of a lie that he has to live, live with no matter how rich you are. These are the chronicles. These are the chronicles, ladies and gentlemen, shining entrepreneurs. If you don't understand the lies that you tell will come back and haunt you no matter how rich you are, no matter how successful you are, no matter how motivated you are and inspired you are, because something is going to fail. Something is going to be misinterpreted. Someone's going to see something. You're not going to be able to keep the lie for a long time. 
and then you have to continue to keep remembering the lie, even if it's 20 years from now, and someone say, remember when you said da 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 da, you're going to tell the truth then because you have no reason. And the red flags is not up to tell you, oh, manipulate, manipulate, manipulate. No, you're going to forget that. And you're going to say something that the person will say, well, that's not what you said 20 years ago. Mm. Then you're looking stupid. So it's just best to just focus on the truth, focus on the reality. And if you choose to do something <laughs> like I would say in my relationship, because I was a product of an extramarital affair. I was the child that came out of an extramarital affair and it doesn't feel good. Okay. I love my mom. I love my dad, but they were selfish. They were, and they had to do what they needed to do in order to live the life and feel the, you know, feel what they needed to feel in order to exist, I guess. But the reality of that story, it goes to show me and I got caught up one time and I was very, very young. I was 24 years old and I got caught up and I don't know how I got caught up in that situation, but I tell you this much, it wasn't fun. It wasn't something that I'm proud to say today, but it's something that I stand on in my truth and I balanced my success in that situation and I apologize for the things that I had done. And I kept going on with my life because, I mean, you can't help it if a person tells you something that is not true and you believe that something because of an emotional attachment and then you, it just happens. But one thing that I say back to Country Wayne, purposely devouring his life and his ingenuity and his success, he could have any woman in this world that he wants to have, but he chooses to lie and play with a relationship that is costing another man over a third of a million dollars just so that he can say that he played with this woman. And then, you know, the innocence, the innocence of the, the fiance within country Wayne, the innocence of this man wanting this man to be his best man, wanting the cheater of his wife, his fiance to be the best man at the wedding. At least he had enough goal to say no. So the point about it, shining entrepreneurs, is we're going to make some mistakes. We're definitely going to fall. People are going to know that we fail. Sometimes these things can be traps set up just to see if we would. Because I know that knowing I was a product of an extramarital affair, my purpose in life was to always be so strong and so believing that It'll never happen to me. I'm not going to be, I won't be second to none. You know what I mean? I'm not going to purposely be someone's second choice. If I, I'm not going to be a side chick knowingly, I'm just not going to do it. So with that being said, as we grow older, we know better. We do things that are much more enlightened and we got to forgive ourselves for the things that we do. And that's what I'm here to tell you now. Do not allow situations to hold you back because if you are born to be a leader and you don't take that lead, you are going to be held accountable for that. You are going to be held because the most high is not going to give someone the gift of success, the gift of born leadership, the gift of leading others to know the truth. And then we don't do it then we have not served our purpose. If we don't serve our purpose, then what happens? The Most High is not able to get people to recognize that there is opportunity in this world, meaning we hold a society back. So we are the elders that need to be in position, whether we're 21, whether we're 18, whether we're 12, whether we're 95, whether we're 85, when we know to do good and to tell the truth and to speak the truth into existence, no matter how many times we have fallen, no matter how many times people can use their agenda against us, that's why the best thing that we should do as entrepreneurs is try to be as real as we can be with ourselves and tell the story before anyone else can get an opportunity to tell it. Mm -hmm. 
Some of us may try to take that secret to the grave. Some people can do that. It's up to them. But regardless, it will eat you alive inside. So the best thing to do is let go. Or have a consciousness like Wayne, where, you know, you make excuses. Well, if you're not married, you're single. And if you're a fiance, you're single until you're married. So we can play as long as we're not married. But is that going to be easy to stop? Right? Right. Is that going to be something that is going to be easy to stop? Because now you're going to feel like a side dude. You're going to feel like, oh, you're going to be wondering about her on her wedding night. (laughs) You can't compete with a married man. You cannot compete with a married woman as an entrepreneur, no matter how much money you have, no matter how much you have empowered yourself to believe that you are all that in a bag of chips. It doesn't it doesn't make you. Mm-mm. So entrepreneurs, yes, I had a lot to talk to you about today. I wanted to lay it down and just put my mind at ease. Uh, you know, sometimes entrepreneurs, we're going to have to be strong and you're going to have to just, just tell life to just sit the hell down and let you control it. <laughs> you know, That's one of the hardest things I have to do. Sometimes when I'm observing my client base, sometimes when I'm observing my tenants or my members or my volunteers or, you know, individuals that are independent with me, I have to literally tell them to sit down and listen to what I have to say. Because sometimes people can be so busy with their own selfish desires and their own selfish needs that they can't even think about anything but themselves And they will step over people. They will step over people in order to make their lives a little bit better. But here's what we don't understand. We don't understand how that affects us mentally, how it affects us spiritually. But if we're strong enough as entrepreneurs, this chronicle is to bring this into the forefront. It is so extremely vital that we must recognize that we have to be in control. We have to be in control under those circumstances because the spirit, we are born leaders. And when we let that light shine, when you let that light shine, entrepreneurs, shining entrepreneurs, when you let your light shine, people are really going to try to dim the light. They're going to try to tell you, no, uh, you're not supposed to be doing this. You're supposed to be over there. And then they take you down this long, dark tunnel and it takes you about a year, maybe two to travel that tunnel, thinking that that was the pathway you were supposed to go only to come back just to find out that you wasted a couple of years of your life. You have to be okay with that. You have to be fine with the fact that, yes, I got played. Yes, I was manipulated. Yes, I was distracted. What happens now? Do you continue to beat yourself over the head because you've been Uh, distracted or do you wipe your bootstrap, pull your bootstraps up and wipe, wipe your dust off of you and keep moving forward. That's what I'm here to tell you to do. These chronicles are examples to you to show you that there are going to be highs and lows. There's going to be disrespect. There's going to be people trying to take your place. There's going to be people trying to slap you down because they're not in your place and can never be there. You're going to have people continually telling you that this is something that you shouldn't do, or they're going to force you to just be distracted. And that's the part I want you to understand when those distractions start to hit entrepreneurs, that is the time that the most high is really and genuinely putting you in your position, putting you in the seat of the emperor, putting you in the seat of the queen, putting you in the seat of the king. Because now all the work has been performed, has been, you know, you know, you have been looked at as the epiphany to what is important. And if people see the importance, they're going to recognize you as the king. They're going to recognize you as the queen. They're going to recognize you as the supporter of the process, that the process is revealing itself, aligning itself. And see, we can talk about 
how a child is born and raised and their environment and how some people cannot respect that environment. They can't even respect the fact that they are being trained up in the right way that they should go because the bloodline, the DNA does not have them as a true leader. They may be a worker there. They may be a volunteer. They may be something other than a leader. And I'm not saying I'm not putting no shade on anybody's level. I'm saying that each one of us has a mission here on this planet and nobody should just be so punked out because of their situation, because of their, how hard it is and that they see people going through things that they could never, ever experience. They don't want to deal with. So they just bow out gracefully and just do absolutely the minimum, the bare minimum. I remember telling my son when he was in college, Slacker was a uh, app that you could listen to free music, slacker.com. And I said, hmm. And it was like Pandora back in the early 90s. And I said, this is the reason why so many people choose not to do anything. They'd rather just sit and listen to music all day in the bed. So much so that the app was called slacker.com. And this was when he would choose not to get up to go to school because he was bored or he didn't have anything uh, to do in class. So he just chose to skip. But let me tell you something, entrepreneurs, when we lie about our brand, when we when we lie and say we're doing something else, but we should be working on our brand, that limits our ability to be a success. And then we got to tell another lie to cover that up. So it's best to just forget the lie and just be real, be authentic, be genuine. I was talking to a client from a while ago. And one thing that she said is, wow, I do remember you telling me this. I do remember telling you telling me, stay focused instead of bullcrapping. Why are you here when you should be out there? You should be out there selling your brand. You should be out there, you know, pushing your product if this is something that you're passionate about. But then some people either don't really want to sell the product or they don't really care about their brand, or they're there to distract point blank. So I've been in enough. Thank you, Sophia, again, for being a part of Chronicles of a Nonprofit. These these episodes, they, they are so real. They're so powerful. And if you're able to think through the scenarios Maybe you can help someone go through their scenario. Maybe you're just there to be here at the Chronicles to see the certain scenarios so you can find some outcomes. Talk to someone about solutions because that's what this channel is about as well. So I thank you so much for being here, liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing to this podcast, being a part of Chronicles of a Nonprofit. You guys are awesome. You're wonderful. Thank you for the opportunities to have comments, to share. I've seen shares on the podcast, and that's wonderful because that means you're spreading the love. You're not, you're not envious of the fact that, you know, these, these chronicles are important and validated and valued to be the truth on YouTube, on Instagram, on on TikTok and on the other podcasts that we're on, our privatized uh, podcast. So this is something that I think you all should really, really consider the empowerment of entrepreneurship and being that leader and not allowing people to throw shade on you, even when you know that you've made a mistake, even though you know that you could have possibly lied and Got gotten something twisted up, go back and apologize. Go back and make that better. Go back and fix it yourself. Because if you were the creator of it, then you can be the manifester to fix it. As always, be consistent, stay on time, be on point. Realize that you are the greatest entrepreneur because you are a born leader 
that was supposed to be here for a time such as this to empower your community. So go out there and do it. Thank you so much. We love you all. And as always, we'll see you next time.